The Francis Crick Institute is an ambitious project to create a world-leading biomedical research facility in the heart of London. It will bring together scientists, academics, doctors, social scientists, engineers and others in an interdisciplinary medical research centre. The design of the building's facades in this challenging location respond to the rich local architectural heritage of the surrounding area. The building relates both to its large civic neighbours, the British Library and St Pancras Station to the south and east, and to the smaller scale residential buildings of the Summers Town Estate to the north and west. What follows is a film presentation of the three full-scale visual mock-ups for the main principal facade types of the building. These mock-ups have been built to test the design in reality and at a one-to-one -one scale and allow the designers, the client and the local authority to appreciate the building's real materials and scale in a manner in which comments and suggestions can be incorporated at an early stage. The mock-ups are a visual representation, so some elements such as aluminium profiles are made in timber and sprayed up in the correct colour to represent a real-life material. Some other materials, such as the terracotta and the glass, are the real materials and build-ups. Three mock-ups have been produced, which cover the six main facade types at the base of the building. The metal roof and walls associated with it are supplied by other contractors and are not covered in this film. The facade types covered are the terracotta, the main projecting curtain walls, the east atrium wall and the south atrium wall as well as the interfaces between these various facade types. The first mock-up represents a portion of the building where the projecting curtain wall facade returns and interfaces with the terracotta. The scale of the building can really be seen in this mock-up, with a high standard floor-to-floor -floor height of 5 metres and a corresponding panel width of 3 metres, it is a building on a grand scale. The southern curtain wall with the deeper 350mm horizontal transoms is represented here. The design is intended to be as lightweight and open as possible to allow great quantities of light to penetrate deep into the lab floors. The triple glazed wall has a high performance coating to the glass giving low G and U values. The panel is broken horizontally into five separate 1m high units, each framed by a horizontal transom and a vertical terracotta fin. On the south facade, the deeper transoms represented here act as Brie Soleil. The only difference between this and the northern elevation is the transom reduces back in depth to 120mm. This facade then terminates and returns back to the main body of the building. Elements of the curtain wall, however, oversail this and return to form a wing wall. Layers of the glass, the vertical mullions and the horizontal transom depths get smaller as if the edge of the facade is dissolving away. The return is closed by a large Type 1C triple glazed full height panel at the end of each projecting bay. Finally, the return meets the precast mortared terracotta wall. These are materials and a building method chosen to give a substantial and robust feel to the base of the building. The terracotta wall is then punctuated in some areas by window units. Represented here, is the northern elevation type 2B. The building has a number of blinds provided to reduce the effects of glare and solar gain through the facade on the occupants. Here can be seen a view of the building with these blinds deployed. The terracotta tiles are cast onto concrete to form large panels. The joints are then mortared in the factory, combining to produce large panels which are then shipped to site. These panels allow the building to be quickly assembled and give a hand-built, robust appearance. The joints between the large panels are filled with a colour-matched, flexible, mastic sealant to allow for relative movement between panels. The panels have been ground-stacked wherever possible to reduce these larger panel joints to a minimum. The finer details of the panel joints are still under review. The mortared joints between the terracotta tiles are of a nominal 8mm across the building. At the corners, the tiles have been extruded to give the appearance of blocks with a depth to them. Whilst this is more difficult technically and more costly than other solutions, this approach adds the general feel that the building is of a solid, hand-built nature and built to last. In areas where science or administrative functions happen behind the terracotta walls, the structural post and lintel approach remains 
but the terracotta infill panel is replaced by a full height window unit. These window units either sit at 90 degrees to the terracotta frame or at an angle dependent on their location. In the section produced here, an angled situation is shown. Each unit has a sill detail which drains into a drainage system set behind the terracotta tile. This is to reduce the amount of water running over the surface of the terracotta panels and hence reduce the likelihood of staining or blooming in the future. The finer details of this approach to the drainage, the depth of the sill and its fixing into the window frames are still under review. The curtain walling system oversails the building edge to form a wing wall. This wing wall brings together tapering transoms, the termination of the vertical mullions and the glazing system. The glass edge is left free of structure with only a small diameter tension bar tying the system together. In response to comments made by the planners, some of the warmth and colour of the terracotta base to the building was introduced into the curtain wall system. This was achieved through the use of moulded terracotta fins expressed on the vertical mullion lines. In this mock-up, the middle four fins have been formed here in terracotta, the real material, whilst the remaining ones are mocked up in sprayed timber. Some work remains to improve on the tolerance of manufacture required to achieve an acceptable aesthetic for these elements when formed in terracotta. Due to their size and weight, these mock-ups were produced in an internal environment. In this shot, we can see some additional portions which were produced to test the texture and colour response of the terracotta and the glass in a daylit condition. The second mock-up represents a story height portion of the main glazed wall to the east elevation of the building. In contrast to the solid, monolithic terracotta base to the building, the east atrium walls present a much more delicate, transparent appearance. Dramatic in scale at 24 metres wide and over 40 metres in height, yet delicate in detail with a principal 750mm width panel, the main atrium wall presents itself as a window to allow deep views into the inner workings of the Institute. The wall is highly technical, presenting its main steel structure externally for all to see, with a fine glazed panel wall draped behind and around it. Story height glass fins support these panels. A low iron, clear glass was selected to give as clear a view as possible into and out of the building. Finally, a dichroic film has been introduced to around 40% of the glass fins. Each panel is supported by a triple laminated structural glass fin. This fin is in turn captured by a stainless steel shoe at each end. These shoes then tie the system back to the main structural grid of the wall. At each 750mm centre, the stainless steel shoes supporting the glass fins are picked up by a structural steel plate connecting back to a horizontal circular hollow section. This shoe detail is repeated along the façade and as the structural element enters the building, the principle will be repeated. There is still some finer detail to be worked out in this location, but the principle remains true. To add another layer of richness to this façade, dichroic fins have been introduced. These will be apparent to passers-by at street level as flashes of colour, but also internally they will throw coloured light over the large expanses of atrium walls at high level. The dichroic material reacts by bending light depending on the position you view it from. This means that an infinite rainbow of colours can be viewed in one piece. In this case, it is applied by laminating a fine metallic sheet into the structural glass fins. It has been arranged across 40% of the glass fins on the atrium wall, with a denser pattern at the very top fanning out to none as it cascades down the façade. The final mock-up represents a half-storey height portion of the curved, glazed atrium wall to the south elevation of the building, interfacing with the terracotta at its edge. As if to capture and contain the shape of the curved metal roof above, the north and south atrium facades don't simply sit in a straight vertical plane, but curve down, enclosing the shorter axis of the cross atria space within. Measuring 10 metres wide and over 36 metres in height, these articulated glass walls allow light to pour into the collaboration spaces at the building's heart. 
Due to its increased geometric complexity, the south double curled wall has been represented here. The north and south facades consist of glazed panels following the same 750mm panel dimension as the roof louvers all the way down to the ground floor level. To the north, the geometry is relatively straightforward, it being a curve extruded in section. However, at the south, where the crank of the southeast building block stretches the atrium around, this causes the atrium wall to have a double curvature. This means that not only are the panels arranged over a curve in section, but also in plan. This can be seen here in the crank between adjacent panels. The panels have oversailing glass edges to give a sharp razor edge to the horizontals of these facades. The return on the underside of the panel is capped by a linen finish stainless steel sheet. This will help to reflect light from outside into the internal atrium spaces. These stainless steel horizontals are also repeated inside the building for maximum effect. The highly complex geometric shape, articulated as planes of glass and stainless steel, meets the more robust and traditional look of the mortared terracotta panels. Rather than running these two conflicting geometries and materials straight into each other, a large rebated interface is created. This allows the terracotta to end in a simple straight cut manner, whilst the glazed panels, with their twists and turns, can terminate with other metal panels and movement joints hidden away. For large portions of the terracotta at ground and first floor levels, a larger 500mm by 500mm size tile is employed. These form strong bases to the corners of the building and help clad the cores at the end of each floor plate. A line or watermark is struck around the base of the building at level 2. This is emphasised by a change in terracotta colour from a range of three darker colours over the ground and first floors to a range of three slightly lighter colours for the stories above. By reviewing these mock-ups, we've been able to glimpse various aspects of what will become one of the Borough of Camden and the City of London's most iconic buildings. We have been able to grasp the grand scale of the project and how the scale has been handled in elevational treatment and choice of materials. But also, on another level, we have seen the delicacy of a great number of elements and the care and attention being paid to the smallest of those details. From the initial concept sketches first shown to Camden Council, followed by more detailed architect's drawings and more recently subcontractor's shop drawings. The production and analysis of the visual mock-ups represents another important step along the path to help construct the Francis Crick Institute. <laughs>